I am Rodrigo Duterte, I'm a Filipino. I love the Philippines because it is the land of my birth. It is the home of my people. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair and members of the House Committee on Justice and other members of uh, other representatives of Congress. I am Attorney Joseph Noel M. Estrada, uh, Council of... Uh, with, with Noel, uh, Your Honor. Uh, with Noel, uh, <laughs> Council uh, with of Joe Noel. Eh. Hey, uh, Noel. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. See, yeah, so you need not uh, take your oath uh, because you cannot speak before us, like the other uh, lawyers. So anyway, uh, uh, Kongdoy... Uh, Ah, papabasa mo na. Okay, so uh, please read into the records uh, your statement, uh, Mr. Canlas. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and uh, honorable members of the House Committee on Justice. Mr. Chairman, I am appearing pursuant to the Honorable Committee's invitation in the matter of the verified complaint for impeachment against uh, Supreme Court Chief Justice Maria Lourdes P. A. Sereno filed by Attorney Lorenzo G. Gadon and endorsed by 25 House members or impeachment case number 002-2017. I am Joe Marcan Las, a senior reporter at the Manila Times. I have been a reporter for the Times newspaper for the past 13 years. I am assigned to cover government bits and write articles about the Department of Justice, Court of Appeals, Sandigan Bayan, Ombudsman, and the Supreme Court. I have written several articles on the Supreme Court, including Chief Justice Sereno. These include the following. Number one, psychiatrist who testified Sereno fired, dated February 23, 2014. Number two, Sereno on hot water over fake resolution, dated December 7, 2012. Number three, Justice Blas Sereno over TRO mess, dated June 4, 2013. And uh, number four, Sereno collects once her staff named Justice, dated January 13, 2016. My article, Justice Blas over Sereno over TROMS, was made part of the impeachment complaint of Attorney Gadon and now subject of the invitation I have received from this honorable committee to answer questions relative to the allegation that the Chief Justice falsified, tampered, or altered the TRO of the Supreme Court in the case of the Senior Citizens Party List case versus Comelec in GR number 2068442285. At the outset, I hereby deny that I have intimated to Attorney Gadon that the source of facts in my article is Supreme Court Associate Justice Teresita J. Leonardo de Castro. I have never revealed to anyone my source or sources in the said article who, suffice it to say, are reliable and well-placed sources. As a matter of fact, for the past 25 years as a journalist and as a reporter for the Justice Beat for two decades, I have not revealed my sources to anyone. I also hereby categorically deny that Justice De Castro was my source in the news article entitled Justice Blas over uh, Sereno over TROMS. I would try my very best to answer further questions based on my personal knowledge pertaining to the articles I have written to aid this honorable committee in its disposition of impeachment case number 002-2017, subject to the protection and privilege accorded to me as a reporter under pertinent laws whenever applicable. As advised by my legal counsel, Republic Act 53, or the Soto Law, or also known as the Shield Law, as amended by Republic Act 1477, protects a publisher, editor, columnist, or duly accredited reporter of any newspaper like myself from compulsion to reveal the source of any news report or information appearing in said publication, which was related in confidence. This protection to reporters is likewise reiterated in the recently enacted law, RA 10173, or the Data Privacy Act. Thank you very much for this opportunity to shed light on the matter. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Canla. So now uh, the uh, uh, floor is now open for a clarificatory question on uh, this matter. Uh, you raise your hand, uh, uh, Vice Chair Doy. Uh, you have uh, you're now recognized.
Well, um, I, I think, Mr. Chair, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, yes, again, good afternoon to each and every one, our colleagues in Congress, and so with our guests. Well, uh, actually, I was the one who who asked for and requested for the subpoena uh, at testificandum um, upon Mr. Jomer Canlas, who is an alleged uh, writer at Manila Times, because his name was dragged into this um, committee hearing during the time that we were asking Attorney Gadon um, regarding the source um, on the alleged ground of falsification, which is dubbed as one of the grounds for the impeachment of uh, Chief Justice Reno, which is a culpable violation of the Constitution, uh, meaning there is a collegial body and um, every now and then resolution or decision uh, shall be reached only by the Supreme Court as a collegial body upon deliberation of all that's in bank or by division. And in one of those cases, uh, as alleged as one of the, those grounds, is the falsification of a temporary restraining order in connection with the Comelec case regarding partyless, uh, partyless case. Now, um, we have heard all of this, um, Mr. Chair, regarding uh, the statement of um, Mr. Callas that he denied. Now, uh, the, that the source was Justice De Castro. Now, I would like to go back now to the complainant, Attorney Gadon. What can you say as regards the, before I go again to Mr. Callas, what is your, uh, what can you say about the denial that he never, it was said that Attorney, I uh, know, Mr. Kenlas never intimated with you regarding the name of the source um, regarding the alteration of the TRO resolution that it was initially recommended that um, by Justice Castro and subsequently without consultation on the part of the Chief Justice with uh, Justice Castro and so with Justice Reyes um, the Chief Justice unilaterally altered and tampered the resolution in contrary with the recommendation. Now, you said during the last meeting that on the alleged falsification, um, it was in fact, uh, if I remember it right, it was said that it was written, I, was, I have heard the, the uh, Manila Times article, and you said during the time that it was Mr. Canlas. And that's why we were compelled. The second time around, we requested for the appearance of Justice De Castro of the Supreme Court. Now, Mr. Canlas is here, outwardly denying uh, the statement that uh, he intimated with you regarding the source. What can you say now, Mr. Gadon? Uh, Your Honor, uh, I cannot uh, really remember now whether uh, uh, it was uh, Joe Mark and Las who intimated it to me, but uh, I talked to him several times, and he may have intimated it to me, Your Honor. And, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, it doesn't change the fact, Your Honor, that there was an article about the TRO. And uh, the uh, existence of the... Uh, uh, incident of uh, changing the contents of the TRO will be uh, testified by uh, uh, Associate Justice Teresita de Castro herself, Your Honor. So I may have, uh, uh, Mr. Joe Marcanlas may have intimated it to me or not, but I, I really cannot remember because there are a lot of people that are giving me uh, information during those times. And uh, Considering that there are more than uh, 300 or so documents involved in the, this case, Your Honor, I really cannot now uh, uh, recall or I cannot really say that uh, he did not uh, disclose it to me, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, okay, anyway, I'll just uh, probably stick with this one question, but I would like again um, to remind the complainant and the rest of uh, us that we're dealing with the impeachment of one of the highest, in fact, the highest official of the judiciary in the person of the Chief Justice. And during the time that we were voting for the uh, sufficiency in form and substance, as we read the complaint, um, some others may disagree with us, 
but it was the rule of the majority that we found, we found that uh, there was sufficiency in substance in form. I would like to remind our dear complainant, uh, Mr. Chair, the utmost responsibility of the complainant. We cannot, we cannot roll and proceed. Well, of course, I must admit there are definitely about 27 actions that are being complained of, so, uh, sufficient to form the violation as uh, provided for under the Constitution. But Mr. Chair, I would like to remind the complainant that we're dealing only with one on this, in this case, in this particular uh, case of TRO. And if you cannot provide, there must be, as again, as I said during the last hearing, you must be having some problems here. Um, in order to evict, in order to oust, in order to remove, we must be have sufficient ground. Now there was, uh, it was very clear, as will be reflected in the <coughs> journal. I cannot but help but tell you this one <coughs> that last time you said it was uh, John Merkel last. Now that there was denial on the part of the one you're quoting with. Now you you cannot uh, you can you you're saying to this committee that you're forgetting everything that cannot be done at the expense of the justice committee at the expense of the impeachment proceeding as provided for under the constitution and on the, at the expense of removing the chief justice of course we have to deal with so many cases here and uh, one by one in fact i would remind uh, every member would be meticulous here but i would like to remind you mr complainant that you cannot just deal with stating someone and if there's that someone will go back here and deny and block your statements and you said i cannot remember that cannot be done uh well instead of pursuing this uh, line of questioning uh, mr chair i reserve my right to uh, ask more other questions later on uh more or less in relation to this or some other grounds but uh well of course uh, with your indulgence of the chair I would like uh, to remind Mr. Mr. Complainant that he cannot do this uh, as we go along discussing all the 27 grounds by just refuting allegations we cannot, which he cannot substantiate Mr. at this Chair. moment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just, Mr. just Chair. a small Mr. point. Chair, man. Sa isa lang, sa isa, isa lang. Uh, very short. Uh, very, very short. Si may nakalista rito. Those who would like to uh, ask clarificatory questions, uh, please. Uh, uh, register point your point name point be, uh, be, uh, to the uh, ComSec. No? So, may just a point of order. So, si Kong Fortun, Kong Risologo, then Kong. If the chair, please, just a small Garcia, point of order. And Very then uh, we will recognize uh, si Kong Just a point Kip of Bemo. order, Mr. Chair. What I, is the point of I order? I noticed that Attorney Gadon is without counsel at this moment, Mr. Chair, and I think, I think this is precisely the reason why they should have counsel. Kasi nag-iba-iba ho siya ng posisyon eh. Baka he should have counsel beside him to remind him of his duties also. Uh, Your Honor, uh, it is understandable that uh, uh, you are not yet recognized. Ah, okay, Your Honor. Uh, sorry, Your Honor. For the information of everyone, La, uh, Larry Gadon is a lawyer and so uh, palagay ko yun din ay sasagot mo. Tama ba? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, kanya, I'm sure uh, he is uh, well versed on this as a practitioner. So, al alam mo na yun, ano? So, na-waive niya yung right niya to counsel? Or, or baka nga kailangan niya precisely ng counsel to remind him on that he's still under all no, 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 his proceedings, Mr. Chair. Okay, Lang so hindi na daw niya kailangan. So, uh, so anyway, uh, this particular issue is a side issue. And we will deal with this uh, at the... Uh, uh, on a different